Bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless Thanks for tuning in to another video on Armor of God. We can't thank you enough for your continuous support of this channel. I'm Timothy, and it will be my turn to share with you today about the life of St. Padre Pio. And as always, if it's not too much of a hassle, please do share this video on your social media platform, Facebook or Twitter to help spread this message. Now buckle up and let's get on with the video. A lot of saints of the Catholic Church possessed the charisma that allowed them to know distant things, or to view the future, or to see and to sense distant space using their senses and their normal intellectual abilities. Padre Pio had the charisma of this supernatural knowledge. Just looking at a person he could see into the most secret parts of his soul. Many testimonies suggest this was the gift of Padre Pio. A woman from Bologna, Italy said, Once my mother went to Father Pio with some of her friends. She met with Father Pio in the sacristy of the convent of San Giovanni Rotondo as soon as he arrived. Padre Pio told her, Why are you here? Go home. Your husband is sick. My mother thought she had left her husband in good condition. Anyway, she went back home on the first available train. When she arrived at home, she asked about my father's health. There was no news. But during the night, my father had serious respiratory difficulties. Something pressed him in the throat. That night, at eleven my father was hospitalized, brought into the operating room. The surgeon that operated on him extracted from his throat at least two basins of puss. Padre Pio had seen in advance what would happen to this lady's husband, and with his suggestion and prayer he had succeeded in influencing the happy solution of the case. One day at sunset, Padre Pio was in the garden of the monastery. He was chatting pleasantly with some of his spiritual children and others of the faithful when he realized his handkerchief was missing. He said to one of those present, Here is the key to my cell. Please go there and get me a handkerchief. The man went to the cell, but besides the handkerchief, he took one of Padre Pio's half-gloves and put it in his pocket. He could not pass up the opportunity to obtain a relic. But when he went back to the garden, and gave Padre Pio the handkerchief, thanks, but now go back to the cell and put back in the drawer the half-glove that you put in your pocket. A certain man had the reputation of being a good Catholic, admired and esteemed by all who knew him. Actually, he was living in sin. He had neglected his wife and was now compensating for his loneliness by a relationship with another woman. On one occasion, he went to confession to Padre Pio. In order to justify himself, he started talking about a spiritual crisis, but he had not counted on facing an extraordinary confessor. Padre Pio stood up at once and shouted, What spiritual crisis? You are a litterbug, and God is angry with you. Go away. A lady came from England to have her confession heard by Padre Pio. She went to his confessional, but Padre Pio closed the window saying, I am not available to you. The woman stayed for several weeks and during this time, daily returned to his confessional and daily was turned away. Finally, Padre Pio consented to hear her confession. She asked the Padre why he made her wait so long to be heard. Padre Pio answered, And you, how long have you made our Lord wait? You should wonder how Jesus could welcome you after you committed so many sacrileges. You have delayed your judgment for years. Besides sinning against your husband and your mother, you have received holy communion in mortal sin. The woman was stunned and reformed. She cried when she received absolution. She returned to England a few days later, very happy. God sees everything we do and we will have to give him a response for everything we do. The following story illustrates that God knows even our most hidden thoughts. In 1921, a man who had belonged to a gang of unrepentant criminals had decided to kill his wife in order to be free to marry another woman. He put together a plan that would provide him with a good alibi. His wife was a devotee of Padre Pio, who lived in the small town of Gargano. 
Since no one in that town knew of him or his reputation, he thought it would be a good place to put his homicidal plan into effect. One day he suggested to his wife that they make a trip to Gargano, and while they were there she could take advantage of the opportunity to visit the friar she admired so much. When they arrived in the town he left his wife in a hotel and went alone to the convent to arrange for her to have confession with Padre Pio. He thought that while his wife was at confession he would be seen in town to corroborate his alibi. He looked for an inn where he would invite some of the town's people to have a drink with him. Then he would make some excuse. Leave the inn. Go kill his wife who had just left confession and then later return to the inn. The convent was surrounded by open country and in the faint light of evening he felt sure no one would see anything. The plan was perfect. When he reached the convent he saw Padre Pio in the confessional. At this point he felt an impulse that he couldn't contain. He knelt in front of Padre Pio's confessional and began to make the sign of the cross. Before he finished, cries came from the confessional. Go away, go away, go away. Don't you know that it is forbidden to kill somebody? Then Padre Pio grabbed the man by the arm and lead him away. The man was stunned, incredulous, and dismayed. He ran away to the country where he tripped on a boulder and fell face down in the mud. For the first time, he acknowledged the horrors of his life full of sin. After a while he saw all of his existence and among the torments of his mind, he understood his inhumane wickedness. Tormented to the depths of his soul, he returned to church and asked Padre Pio to hear his confession. Padre Pio consented and with endless sweetness spoke to him as if he were an old friend. Padre Pio listed for him his whole life, moment by moment, sin after sin, crime after crime, everything in incredible detail until he finally came to his recent intention to kill his wife. The man listened to Padre Pio speaking about the homicide that he had planned in his own mind. He had never told anyone else about it. Exhausted but finally free the man threw himself at the feet of the monk and begged forgiveness. This was not the end. Before the absolution was finished Padre Pio asked him, You have desired to have children, haven't you? Well, do not offend God anymore and you will have a child. The man returned a year later to Padre Pio, totally converted, and he had become the father of a child who was born from the same wife he had wanted to kill. A priest told of an adventure that happened to a brother of his who had traveled very far to go to confession to Padre Pio. After his confession, Padre Pio asked him, My son, do you have anything else to confess? No, Padre. Padre Pio told him to look for something else to remember. He examined his conscience again without success. He could not find anything else to confess. Then, with sweetness, Padre Pio told him, Son, you arrived yesterday morning in Bologna at five in the morning. Churches were still closed. Instead of waiting, you went to the hotel to rest before Mass. You went to bed, and then you fell asleep so deeply that you woke up at three o'clock in the afternoon when it was too late to attend a Mass. I know you have not done it in malice, but it was a negligence that hurt our Lord. The monks of the convent of Venafro, who entertained Padre Pio a few times, were witnesses of other inexplicable phenomena besides the visions. While Padre Pio was seriously ill, he was able to know the thoughts of people. One day Friar Augustine went to find him. This morning, say a particular prayer for me, Padre Pio requested. Going down to the church, Friar Augustine decided to remember the brother in a special way during the Mass, but then he forgot to do it. When he returned to Padre Pio, the Padre asked him, Have you prayed for me? I forgot to do it. Father Augustine answered. Padre Pio told him, Don't worry. God has accepted the intention you made while you were going down the staircase. Padre Pio's prophetic spirit, as told by Padre Carmelo, who was superior of the convent of Street, Giovanni Rotondo, is contained in this testimony. During the last world war, we spoke of the war every day and of the uproarious military victories of Germany on all the fronts of battle. 
I remember one morning I was in the little parlor of the convent, and I read in a newspaper the news that the German troops were moving by now in the direction of Moscow. For me, it was important news. In fact, I saw in that news that the war would end with the final victory of Germany. Going out in the corridor, I met Padre Pio, and gladly I told him shouting, Father, the war is ended. Germany has won. Who has told you it? Asked Padre Pio. Father, the newspaper, I answered. And Padre Pio said, Germany has won the war. Keep in your mind that Germany, this time, will lose the war, worse than the last time. Remember it. I told him, Father, the Germans are already near Moscow. He added, Remember what I have told you. I said, But if Germany loses the war, Italy will lose the war as well. And he emphatically answered me, We will see if together they will end the war. I didn't understand those words, taking into account the alliance of Italy and Germany, but the words became clear the following year after the armistice with the English and Americans of September 8, 1943, and the Italian declaration of war against Germany. A lady said, I wanted to take part in a trip to St. Giovanni Rotondo in order to meet and to approach Padre Pio. It was the year 1961. A man in the bus suddenly cried. My wife wanted me to bring her to this impostor. The reference to the dear Padre Pio was evident, for that insult had struck me to the heart. When we arrived at Street Giovanni Rotondo, we immediately went to the church to take part in Holy Mass. At the end of the Mass, Padre Pio came toward us. When he was next to us, he stopped just in front of the gentleman who had insulted him on the bus and said, Come here, come to this impostor. The man became pale. He knelt, and stammering, he said, Forgive me, Father, forgive me. Then Padre Pio put his hand on his head and, blessing him, added, Stand up, I forgive you. That gentleman converted instantly to the delight of all present. Father Alessio Parent said, I washed Padre Pio's face, and I helped him to go to bed. Then I rummaged in the pockets of the suit to take some metal that he always had in his pocket. I wanted to bring them with me in memory of Padre Pio, but I did not find anything in the pocket. The day after I went to greet him and help wake him up. At that point I was surprised since he put his hand in his pocket and he gave me some metal with photo by telling me, keep them always with you for my memory. I did not tell him that I wanted to have some medals. Father Atanasio Leonardo said, We was in the choir for the prayers and the meditation of the evening. The superior of the convent gave the signal of the term of the common prayer. Padre Pio said, Pray for our provincial father that is in agony. We knew that Father Bernard of Abacella was sick of bronchus pneumonia, but we didn't know the serious state of the illness. We prayed along. The day after, December 31, 1937, we knew that he was dead. After few months, Padre Pio said he had entered heaven. Padre Pio had the gift of discernment. He was able to recognize that a man was a priest or if objects had been blessed. The phenomenon of discernment was one among many of his gifts. One day a gentleman who wore a jacket, tie and pants was in the sacristy with the others waiting for Padre Pio's arrival. This man was in the first row. When Padre Pio saw him, he said, Father, you came disguised, but you don't have to be ashamed. Next time, you can come dressed as priest. Padre Pio told another young man who was wearing only pants and a sweater that he should go away and come back wearing the cowl of St. Dominic. Confused and embarrassed, the young man confessed in front of everyone to being a Dominican priest. Sometimes, when Padre Pio was shown objects like crowns of the rosary or asked to bless sacred images, he returned some to the applicant with the precise statement, This has been already blessed. He was correct. Padre Pio was able to sense if water was blessed water, and if someone gave him a bottle water of Lord's water without telling him where the water came from, he would bring the bottle to his lips and kiss it. 
Once the bus driver from Rome, to whom Our Lady appeared in a cave at the Three Fountains in Rome, went to meet with Padre Pio. He related, When I was with him, and we had never met before I handed him a little envelope without telling him what it contained. Padre Pio took the envelope, held it to his breast with passion, and he didn't return it to me. The little envelope contained some earth from the cave of the three fountains. A young man in Padova, Italy approached Padre Pio for a benediction. It was the time when the Russian communist regime was persecuting the Catholic Church. The father looked at him and told him, Remove your communist partnership card from your wallet together with the photos of those bad women that you jealously preserve. Are you not ashamed by such photos? Yes, I am, said the guy. And since you have intention to do cleaning, remove also the pictures of the bad women in the drawer of the table at home. A lady told this story. In 1945, my mother brought me to St. Giovanni Rotondo to introduce me to Padre Pio personally and let me confess to him. There were so many people. Waiting for my turn, I thought about what I had to tell him, but when I knelt in front of him, my mind went blank. The dear father immediately acknowledged my timidity, and he told me smiling, Do you mind if I speak for you? I nodded with a sign of the head, and after a moment, I was amazed. It didn't seem possible. Padre Pio told me, word by word, what I would have told him. I kept calm, and mentally, I thanked him for having helped me to experience one of his gifts. I submitted to him the health of my soul and my body. He answered, I will be your spiritual father forever. I left with an immense joy in my heart. While I was returning on the train and in the street, I smelled an intense perfume of flowers that I will never forget. A bus driver who was transporting tourists on a trip to Gargano was in the sacristy waiting to leave again when Padre Pio arrived. Although the bus driver was in the middle of the group of about ten people, Padre Pio noticed him and said, Son, don't you even ask for a blessing? The driver, amazed, stepped forward from the group and knelt in order to receive Padre Pio's blessing. But instead of blessing him, Padre Pio asked him, So, what have you done? Nothing, Father. I haven't done anything. I went to confession when I was at Monte Sant'Angelo, and I have even attended Mass with the tourists I am guiding. And afterward, I have purchased some religious objects. Ah, it was not those holy images that made you curse but those sweets. The astounded driver remembered that after the mass he had cursed because the number of nougats he bought turned out to be less than was needed by the tourists. Mortified, he tried to say something but Padre Pio drew him far from the group and said, That's not all. On the road on the way to St. Giovanni Rotondo, you slighted and offended a driver that you have met on your road. The man who said he hadn't done anything started to say an act of contrition. The friar who was the guardian of the convent of St. Giovanni Rotondo related, Last year, a dealer from Pisa came come to Padre Pio for a healing of his daughter. The holy man looked at him and said, You are sicker than your daughter. I see you dead. No, 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 Padre. I'm very well, answered the man. Wretch! Padre Pio cried. Unfortunate! How are you well with so many sins on your conscience? I can see at least thirty-two sins. Everybody can see the amazement on the dealer's face. After his confession, he told whomever would listen to him. He already knew everything, and he has told me everything about my life. Well, that's all for this video, and we sincerely hope that you've learned a lot from watching this video. For us personally learning about the lives of the saints can be a truly humbling process. Some, even among us Christians, seem to think that miracles and gifts stopped 2,000 years ago. But miracles happen every day if only we choose to see it. How truly amazing our God is, and with this we thank you again for taking the time to watch this video, to listen until the end and God bless all of you. And again, if it's not too much of a hassle, Please do share and spread this video on your Facebook and Twitter so that we are letting the world that is increasingly becoming pagan and turning towards Satan that God can never be defeated and we will continue to spread the good news everywhere for the devil is nothing when he's compared to God.